The themed structure. As we mentioned in the introduction, we believe that the best retrospectives are structured in order to help set expectations about what is going to happen to ensure they don't just become talking shops, but rather information is gathered, analysed and acted upon. We've designed these retrospective templates around the structure that we called themed. We believe that one of the most important characteristics of a successful retrospective is that it's focused on a particular topic or subject. Therefore, each of the templates that we've designed is focused on a specific aspect of the team's process. And we recommend that the first part of the retrospective structure be set aside to explain what topic the retrospective is designed to help the team address. Of course, all of these templates could be used for other topics with a small amount of creative tailoring, so don't think that they're too fixed. The next part of the retrospective structure looks at the hook. The term hook comes from the screenwriting industry, as scriptwriters are encouraged to grab the attention of the audience or the reader in the first 10 or so pages of a screenplay. A good hook for a feature film is one that will be able to hold the audience's participation for about two to three hours. And the same could be true for a hook for a retrospective. A good hook will explain the purpose and the logistics of the meeting, as well as the expectations and the participation that will be required. The hook is also the first opportunity to refer back to the topic of the retrospective. And in our retrospective designs, you will see that we make use of this metaphor introduced in the topic. The next section we look at is dedicated to capturing information which could include what happened during the last iteration, for example. We call this section events, and we try to encourage the team to collect this information as objectively as possible, without delving too much into the subjective interpretation of that information. By this, we mean trying to avoid classifying these events as either good or bad, or to put any other kind of judgment on them for the time being. Also, we want to try and refrain from diving into any other type of insight just yet. The objective here instead is to, as much as possible, capture data from the sprint that couldn't be debated. Everyone should be able to agree that these things happened, even if later on they may differ in their perception or interpretation of these events. Once we have the key moments of the iteration captured, we will then start to look at how we interpret them and look for meaning. This is the point of the retrospective where the facilitator will guide the team to adding their subjective interpretations into those events of the iteration. Perhaps the team will explore whether these events were helpful or unhelpful. Maybe they'll look for patterns or links between the events, or maybe even how it affected the team's morale. The next section in the retrospective allows us to give you as a facilitator an insight into some of the other different avenues that you might want to pursue when facilitating this particular retrospective. This section also allows for the team to explore what else they might want or feel the need to discuss. Perhaps there are alternative perceptions the team need to consider, or there might be variations to the retrospectives that we could run instead. And then finally, we come to decisions. It's all very well having a focused and balanced retrospective within the team, but if there's no attempt at improving the team's process, then it could be argued that the, that the meeting is meaningless. Therefore, we dedicate a part of each retrospective to guiding the team to make some decisions about how they wish to move forward and take some learning forward. All of these sections will align with the metaphor within the theme of the retrospective and should become a familiar structure for the team's future retrospectives.